Hi guys, and thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to start a new course today, and what the course will be, absolute beginners on this particular style of guitar. So what's this style of guitar? As I've mentioned in other videos that I've done, I really enjoy playing the lovely old music from the 30s, 40s and 50s, you know, an American song, but uh, the chords are really beautiful to play, and especially as a guitarist, the chords are very, very satisfying to play. You love the chords, the turnarounds, the progressions and everything that. And there were songs in those days were really beautifully written, and that's what we want to do on the guitar. I'll talk more about the songs and the music later on. But first of all, about the guitar and things like that that I'm using. Uh, now, this is my old Epiphone Sheraton. I've had this for a long, long time. In fact, I even bought it secondhand, and it's absolutely perfectly suitable for this kind of music. Uh, I wouldn't think twice if I'd used it for a gig. As I say, it's a very viable guitar and uh, it does everything can I would ask of it. If I was improving it, the only thing, I'd probably only do one thing to it. Uh, and I'm not going to do it because I don't want to take the guitar off the road because I play it quite a lot. Uh, I've changed the nut. It's a plastic nut in it. So I just hand it in at the music shop and ask me to put uh, a bone saddle on it or one of the new composite materials on it and that would help the guitar to ring more. But that's all, everything else is great. Uh, machine heads, absolutely nothing wrong with them. I told you, I've had this for a long, 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 long time, and uh, I've gigged with it and everything, and machine heads have always been reliable. Uh, the pickups, well, obviously it's not Gibson Humbucker pickups on it, but the pickups that are on it are Epiphone, and this style of music, they're absolutely perfect. They're fine, there's not a thing wrong with them. The only thing I would say to be very careful with uh, and that's the strings, and I'll come to strings in a minute. Now, the amplifier I'm running through here, uh, I've got two of them because I like them so much. There's V Fender Champs. I think it's transistor uh, transformers in them, uh, but there are two Fender 6V6 valves in them, which gives it that lovely warm, tune, uh, warm tone. And uh, they were reasonably inexpensive, well, for a Fender amplifier when I bought them. But again, this is for in the house. There's, you don't really have to go nuts and pay for a really expensive boutique amplifier. Anything, because all we're really going for is a nice warm sound. And maybe with a wee touch of reverb, just to make up for the, the room, maybe sounding particularly dead. Plus it sounds good. But uh, as I said earlier on, we talk about the strings that I use. Now, in fact, just about all the time when I play these guitars, and I've got quite a few guitars in this particular style, is always use 10 gauge on them, uh, usually by the top manufacturers, you know who they are, and the standard now is very, very high, so the the strings, usually the quality is really good, I very, I can't remember the last time I had a string breakage, but tens, because we're playing finger style, it's perfect, not too hard on the guitar, they're not too hard on your fingers, and because some of the shapes can get quite involved, it's not, uh, the axis are not too it's difficult on them for pushing them down, Really, really cool, so go for 10s. The only thing I would say, and again, this is just me talking, this is not from my book, you don't have to do this, but what I do when I put the strings on, especially because of playing finger style, rather than just putting the string right through and start tightening them away, I'll actually get quite a lot in the string winding, as much as I can without it being ridiculous or far too, you know, unsightly looking, but I'll get a lot on the, the, the actual machine head because when we're playing fingerstyle, at least when I'm playing fingerstyle, I can be quite, hit it quite hard, or pull quite strong. And I, I always get the idea, if there's not much in the winding, uh, it pulls it out of tune. Well, at least that's what happens with me. So I'll put quite a lot on the, on the wap, uh, wire around the capstan. And that really helps with the, the tuning on it. Now, so as I say, that's basically all you need. That's just a guitar. A good quality lead. I mean, again, I've been playing the guitar for a long, long, long time. Buy cheap leads, and that's exactly what you get. Cheap leads that crackle, break down, and everything. Really invest in a good lead. So that's just. It. So I've explained the guitar I'm using. But by the way, don't 
doesn't necessarily have to be a, a hollow body guitar. As I keep saying, it, well, I mean, I've used, uh, I've got a Fender uh, Telecaster, my son has it just now, and I've done a lot of stuff in the, the Telecaster, and it sounds cool as well. And you've always got to remember, as I was saying to a friend, Les Paul played a Les Paul. You know I mean, so I was a solid body guitar, so it's not as if solid body guitars can't play this style. As long as you're in a position where you can get this nice warm sound, and that's what we'll talk about now. Right, so on an ordinary guitar like this, you have the two pickups. Now sometimes you'll see a lot of jazzers, and I hate, uh, hasten to add, I'm not a jazz guitarist, I'm just a guy that likes playing the guitar. But when I mean, you see a lot of these guys, they'll play exclusively on the neck pickup to get that warm tone, which is fine. But the way I look upon it, my guitar's got two pickups, so I'm going to use the two of them to try and improve the sound. So what I'll do is I'll have it in the middle position where the two pickups are getting used. Most of it will be on the neck pickup, but if I want to add a wee bit extra treble, I'll just put some more on the treble pickup, on the bridge pickup, and that brains up a wee bit. Uh, normally just put the tone controls full right up, and just leave them. And uh, I'll, to try and get the sound that I want, I'll use the pickups to get the sound. Mainly the neck, but if I want it a wee bit brighter, then I'll start to bring in the, the treble pickup. So that's basically what I'm doing for the sounds. So there we are, that's the equipment I'm using. So as I say, any gear is great. Uh, definitely does definitely does not have to be super expensive gear. As I say, I love Mold Sheraton, it's going nowhere. I've done many a gig with it, very good, very reliable. As I say, that's the only thing I'm going to do when I get a, a, a chance to put it in dry dock, is to get the, the nut changed, and that'll make the guitar sound a lot brighter, which really, really will help it. And that's not an expensive fix either. So that's it, gear-wise. Right, now we'll talk about the music. Right, as I said, I really love this early stuff. Uh, the ballads, the 30s, 40s and 50s, just the chord structure, the way you look tonight and lullaby, a bird lad, the way the chords run together, absolutely beautiful. Because in those days, uh, a lot of the music was written in piano and string arrangers uh, was done on them, where nowadays, well, from the 60s upwards, a lot of tunes were written in the guitar. And uh, don't get me wrong, I think it's great if you could write a tune in three chords. I mean, Johnny Cash, nobody near him, and to have the ability to write a really successful tune that everybody likes just using three chords is an unbelievable talent and I really respect that. But you don't hear these beautiful chord structures generally in modern music. The only people who get near that were the Beatles. Uh, they use a lot of lovely chords, diminished nines and things like that, and I think that's one of the reasons why the, the Beatles are so nice to listen to because their chord structures and a lot of their tunes. But that's what we're going to talk about first of all, is chord structures. So. I don't know the standard that everybody's at, so what I'll do, <coughs> without being condescending to anybody, we'll take it right back to the bare basics, and uh, I'll do a lot in first position just now, so you can follow exactly what I'm doing. So what we'll do is we'll take the key of C, and as you know, the key of C has three main chords, the first, the fourth, and the fifth. Now you'll hear this phrase used a lot, one, four, five. All it means, it's a first the green, the scale, the fourth, and the fifth. They're the most common chords that are used in a basic tune. Say, for example, like the Johnny Cash tunes. So, but what does that really mean? So, again, we're playing the key of C because it has no sharps or flats in it. All that means, sharps and flats, it means how you would have to alter the note to make the note play a scale with the correct intervals. But I'm not going to get too deep in that just now. I will later, though. So, the key of C... Uh, obviously the scale is do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, which in notes is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. After G, by the way, you go back to A again. So it's C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Simple as that. So the first and the fourth and the fifth. The first is obviously C. The fourth is F, C, D, E, F. And the fifth is G. And in a song, the fifth is, is quite often a dominant seventh. It just means it's the seventh note gets played. So instead of a G, it's F. So you get this effect. Back to the C. As I said, there's been many fantastic songs written with just three chords, and I'm full of admiration for anybody that can do that. But as I say, in a lot of these early ballads, they used a lot more in ball chords, more arranged. Uh, spread out because I say it's usually piano players that are writing all these fantastic songs that you can just play anything. So you use a lot of chords that you won't be familiar with, as I say, diminished, 
augmented nines, flat nines, 13 flat nines, 7 flat 11s, but don't get bamboozled by them. They're really, really not as hard as they seem to actually work out what the chords are. And again, that's why you're watching me, so we can work on that. So as I say, you've got the basic one, four, five. We'll just do that one more time in C. It'd be C, F, G, and back to the C. Now the other common, there's two more common chords that come in a lot in this style of music. One is the minor second. That just means if we're in C, we go to the second, which is D. It's a minor second, so we'd play D minor. So you'd get C, D minor, then maybe the fifth. The other one that's common is the minor six. So I said minor, so also it must be minor. So it's the sixth note, C, D, E, F, G, A. So it'd be A minor. So then you get this very familiar turnaround, C, A minor, D minor, G, which it really could be said as one, minor six, minor second, fifth. And where that comes, I hate playing in C, and where that comes in really handy is if you're listening to a tune and you're trying to work out the chords of it, Right, before you do anything, you know the one, four, five and that key. So I think, well, the most common chords are one, four, five, the C, A, C, the F and the G. And then there's a few other, more other chords going on in the tune you can't think of. You know, well, I know the other most common chords are the minor second and the minor six. So I'll try them. So that really helps us. So even if we're sitting down and we're being asked to accompany somebody playing a tune, we know we've got a rough idea of the chords in that key and a couple of extra chords that might be thrown in so we can listen for them. Because uh, a lot of the tunes that I do, I, I don't do somebody else's written arrangements. So I'd rather do my own and have a lot more fun doing my own. So if it's a tune that I've never done before, I'll, I'll listen to it and I'll think, what's going on here? And because of the knowledge of chord structure, you've got a rough idea of what it'll be so you can accompany it. And that does thing a lot, uh, brings you a lot further than me. Right? The other thing we're going to be doing is the right hand, okay? So again, we've got a whole series of lessons to go through in the right hand, so I'm not going to rush everything in a winner. But basically, the thumb will play the basses, and the three fingers play the three trebles. Obviously not all the time, but that's all the basis of it. So, and again, we'll take it very slowly, because I know it's not an easy thing to learn. I've been doing it most of my life, so right in. But I know, cause I remember the days when I was starting, it's, it's quite tricky. So what I'm going to do, again, this is not a long lesson, this is just an introduction. I'm just going to introduce two more chords that you probably wouldn't have uh, dealt with before and how we play them in the right hand. And this is leading up to a tune I'm going to teach you how to play later on. So we're going to play in a minor key for a change, right? We're going to play in A minor. Again, I'm just keeping everything up here so you can see what I'm doing. And again, the same rules apl applies in a minor key, the 1, 4, 5. So the 1, 4, 5 in A minor is A minor. You know all this. D minor, E, or E seventh, back to A minor. So I'm going to introduce two new chords to you here, right? And uh, they're used quite a lot in turnarounds, but they also can be used as part of the song as well. And uh, when I play it, you might think, oh, that's that chord, I've heard it a lot before in a song, and so I'm going to explain to you what it is. And it's a minor seventh flat five. There's quite a few way, different ways of playing it in different positions, but I'm doing it in second position here again so you can see what I'm doing. And it normally runs from there to the fifth and back to the first again. So you get this sort of effect. Okay, so we'll go through the B minor, B minor 7 flat 5. First finger is going in a B in second position in the A string. So I'm in, this, I'm in the A string, second fret, that's giving me the B, okay? And then in the D string, I'm in the third fret, that's giving me the F. In the G string, I'm on the second fret, that's giving me an A. And on the B string, I'm in the third fret again, and that's giving me the D. And the great thing about this chord is you always look to where your first finger is. So if somebody said to me, I need you to play C minor 7 flat 5, 
Well, instead of running out the room, what I do, just put your first finger on a C and build that chord shape round it. Okay? Same as somebody said, play me E minor 7 flat 5. There's the E flat there. One up from D, obviously, in the same shape. So it's a great thing. It's a really, really good chord. And it also helps your knowledge of the guitar, the fingerboard. We'll talk a wee bit about that later. So let's just run through that. So we're going to work in these chords, A minor, B minor 7 flat 5, only this time instead of playing straight E, we're going to play E with a flat ninth. okay? Now the ninth note in the scale of E is F sharp, so it's an F natural we're looking for. So we're going to play it again, I'll keep it up in first position just now, and what we'll do is we'll play a 7th flat ninth again. That's not really as bad as it sounds. So all we're going to do to play that 7th flat ninth is put our first finger on the G sharp. So that's on the G string, first fret. Put my pinky on the D, so that's the third fret in the B string. And then all I'm going to do is bar my first finger across. But it's not hard to bar, it's just three strings we're talking about. And that's giving me the F natural. If you want, I'm using my pinky, but you could use your third finger if you want. And that's an E7 flat ninth. So I'll just go through that again. In fact, a quick way to do it would be if you barred in the first fret, just the three strings, just the three trebles, then play that D there. That's an E7 flat ninth. Cool thing about that shape, I barred there, and there's my F natural. If I put uh, my second finger in an F sharp, it's now a ninth. So you have ninth, flat ninth, be taking one finger on and off and back to A minor. Okay, right, we're nearly at the end now. You can take a rest. So we're just going to talk about the right hand. And we're just going to do a basic arpeggio. We'll get into a lot more involved stuff later on, bosses, uh, swing, all this sort of stuff. But uh, for the basic, just to play these chords and to get used to this turnaround, all I'm going to do is, again, first position, A minor chord, just playing an A bass. Okay? with the thumb, and then what I'm doing is my, I'm letting my thumb go into the next string, the D string, and play that as well. Then the three trebles, just my three fingers. So you're getting this, thumb, thumb, one, two, three. Now, the hardest thing about doing that, as I've mentioned in other videos, is trying to keep the right hand up. It's the hardest thing you'll do is learning to be a fingerstyle guitarist. And this will take quite a while, so don't be hard on yourself. This is not an easy thing to learn to do, but it will come. The reason why we want to try and keep this hand up like you see we have it here is because that means we can control the tone a lot better. But that's not easy. I know it's not easy. Even if you just do it for a very short period of time, then give yourself a rest. So anyway, let's run through the chords again using that. Remember, A minor chord, thumb in the A string, thumb in the D string, then the three trebles. So we do it in the A minor. B minor 7 flat 5. And then E 7 flat ninth. In fact, uh, oh yeah, you could use an open D because of that's fine, just use an open D string. So I'm playing the E open, then the D open, and then the rest of the chord, then back to A minor. I'll do it one more time. A minor, B minor 7 flat 5, E 7 to the flat ninth. Back to A minor. If you've done it a few times and it's beginning to loosen up, you're getting a wee bit more adventurous. What you could do is bring the trebles back again, like this sort of effect. You'll find the tendency will be to put your hand down here and anchor your hand here. And that's what you've really got to try and uh, uh, not to do. 
because that's you anchored there. You can't move, you can't get all these top tones. And I've seen guys that have been playing guitar for years and they got into that habit years and years ago and they can't get out of it. And it, it's a long time, as I say, to, to, to develop this technique. It's no easy. I mean, there's, people keep telling, there's a lot of guitar that is easy to play or comparatively easy to compare to other things. But this path that you've chosen isn't particularly easy. It, it, uh, it's not impossible. Uh, it's not very difficult, but it's not easy. So it, it requires quite a wee bit of work. And that's one of the great things about playing this style of guitar. Uh, you can unplug it at night and you can you can sit in the living room uh, watching videos or whatever on the television and you can still be going without annoying everybody. So, okay, guys, uh, we'll leave it there just now. That was just an introduction. And, uh, we'll, we'll talk more about uh, the chords, the structure of these tunes, uh, the right hand, the left hand timing, maybe a wee bit about music, but I'll try and take it too easy, not go too fast, uh, so you can really get into what I'm doing. So thanks very much for watching, uh, I'm going to try and make this thing a regular thing every week, and uh, I hope to see you again soon, so bye now.